Hello everyone, this is Dial 20 and welcome to episode 140 of Dial 20's Let's Play series where I'm setting up a new interface. And I'm going to show you guys interface channels today in Integrated Dynamics. Basically, think of like Ender I.O. with item channels and the color coding. So you know you can have like different colors of channels in Ender I.O. Interface channels are like that. It's an integer value, so it's, you know, whatever number you put in there. When you place an interface against a thing, it defaults to interface channel zero. Um, so generally, you don't need to worry about them unless you want to extract things that, you know, are different um, and, and make sure that different extractors on the same network can pull from different chests. So by default, when you hit this little button up here, you'll notice, um, let's see, uh, there should be... It might be in this setting here, channel zero. Uh, that's the channel with which it's allowed to pull blocks from. So this is our TNT placer, right? So he can pull blocks out of channel zero. And by default, the interface that we placed here, which is where we've been putting TNT, is also channel zero. I'm setting up an automation now to pull nether stars out and drop them on the nether star flower. So this is gonna be interface channel one, and then I'm gonna set this Boolean value here, place all item entities to use channel one. Cool? So that's pretty neat, neato burrito. So now he will pull items out of this chest. So rather than filtering and saying pull item stars out, which is surprisingly a little more difficult than you would think, um, instead what it's gonna do is it's going to go ahead and, and just place items when given a true value. Uh, and it's gonna pull from this chest, which I'll always put another stars in. It's a little bit simpler of an approach, right? So what we wanna do is check for this value to equal zero. And that's when we can pull items here. Okay, so that should be pretty simple. And we're gonna set this uh, little automation up real quick right now because I was starting to work on this and I was like, eh, let's record this thing real quick just so people can see how cool this is, right? So uh, we're gonna want an integer value of zero. So we'll just get that, boom, zero value. So if the amount of durability left on the nether star equals zero, which is the same as there not being another star in the space, then we want to go ahead and drop a new nether star in there, right? So we're going to want to have a Boolean value of uh, damage value equals zero. And that's going to be your true false amount. Cool. Now I should have no problem still keeping this in here. Give me that. And my integer value of zero is going to go in here. We might have already had an integer value of zero. I forget. We did. So we could have compared it to the existing variable, but meh, doesn't matter. And then you should have no problem accepting this. Boom! He just spit out an item. Look at that. Haha. <laughs> cool. Now he spit it out a little hard. So let's check this out. Channel, round robin, dispense, offset XYZ, lifespan and ticks, pick up delay, velocity. Let's make it a zero. That might be what we want to do. Yaw, pitch, item transfer rate. That should be cool. So I'm going to pick that item up. It's going to be zero. Let's try this now. I'm going to actually take you out for a sec because I want to be standing right there and see it work. But he should accept the faded nether stars, which is another benefit to not having a filter. See? Velocity zero. He had no velocity when he got shot out. There's a lot of, if you think about it, there's some pretty banana stuff you can do by messing with the offsets and the lifespan and the pickup delay and all that stuff. Like, there's some cool thing going on there that you can play with. Um, I'm hoping that the lifespan of 6,000 ticks, what is that? Uh, 20 ticks in a second would be 300 seconds, so five minutes. Um, you know, I might bump that up a little bit. I don't know if that actually affects when the item will decay. And I also don't know if faded nether stars are hard-coded to not ever decay. I would assume that they are. And by decay, I mean, like, after five minutes, items despawn in the world. So I would assume that faded nether stores are, are kind of hard-coded to not let that happen. Um, but as you can see, that's my only source of mana now because we've run out of food. So speaking of running out of food, uh, let's set up that other automation thing that we were going to do real quick here. Um, yeah, I know. You wanted to eat your laundry. Um... Did he eat all that food? Is that what happened? Did he just immediately pick up all the food that was right there? Because that's kind of funny if you think about it. Hey, there we go. Cables. Okay. Interface. Boom. Sweet. So now we're going to want to make sure that these items 
because it should be bound to the same block space, right? If you think about it, I think all this cares about is the x, y coordinates of the block space it's bound to. So even though it says chest at that position, I'm thinking it'll still pull from the interface without me having to rebind it. But worst case, I just click on the thing again. But just for testing, I want to find out, right? So let's make sure that all the things that we are going to... Oops, I picked up my thing. All the things that we're going to do here. Let's do that and that. So hopefully you spit out. There you go. Sweet. Oh no, he put a normal nether star there. You bum. I didn't want you to do that, but that's okay. We'll just put those away and fix that later. Um, so let's see, we want cooked chicken. So we're going to want to have a recipe for that. Cooked chicken is simply one-to-one -one on you. Ooh, we need more patterns. Cool. Put that away, and then we have a Gaia Guardian fight to do, right? Baked potato. Oh, I need to yell at Rawl. I found I discovered this on my on my streams the other day, and I guess that is just directly a thing. So carrots we don't need to cook or do anything with, right? Do we know how to make steak? We don't. Um, when you click here, you used to be able to get the recipe lookup, but that's overridden, so you can click and drag. But I that that stinks. I do not like that. I do not look like I do not like that at all. Now, Confit Bialdi is going to be a little trickier to automate, right? Um, not terrible, though. I should be able to automate that with rats. Should we do that for fun? I feel like we could do that for fun, right? We could set up a little Confit Bialdi recipe, right? For now, I'm just going to go over to my smelting factory and boop, 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 right? Um, yeah, I'm going to need to get the chef rat. We're going to have to have him pick items up. Yeah, we can do this. I think this is doable, right? Kind of like we did over here. Remember we had the automation over here with the rat that was doing the things? We could do something very similar with another rat. I think we could do that. I think that's doable for sure, right? Um, but let's just get like half a stack of baked potatoes, steak, um, chicken, pork, Right, so we're going to want half a stack of each is pretty much what I'm at. Potatoes, carrots, and chicken, and pork. For a moment I was sitting there thinking to myself, like, why do I have six stacks of items? Oh, because I have... No, give me those back. Because I had two sets of carrots. The derp. You guys come here for the derps. Don't pretend you don't. Perfect. See, it's working. And now we just need a crafting card in there. Bada bing, bada boom. And what he's waiting for is some confit bialdi. Which we're gonna have to automate now. So let's do that real quick, just just because we can, just because we can. Um, so let's get a the chef's hat. Where's the chef's the chef dude? Rat upgrade chef. We're gonna wanna drop some rats in the world. You, my little buddy, can be my chef rat. Ba boop, ba boop. Stay here. Good. All right. Let's uh, put you on my shoulder for a sec. Now, I think I can actually give him the chef hat. Can I give him a chef hat? Where's the chef hat? Hey. Oh, it's not called a hat. Well, there's your problem. Haha. <laughs> That's so great. That's so great. How can you not love it? How can you not love this mod? It's the best mod. It is just the best mod. All right. So what we're going to want to do, presumably then is have two ch uh, yeah, I guess two chests. And then the Confit Bialdi needs some vegetables. So if we had, uh, let's find just like a spot in our sub-basement somewhere to automate this process. Not super important where it goes per se, but you know, we'll make sure that it's groovy. And you're all being silly, huh? We're gonna have to figure out why this thing broke. 
This actually should be fixed um, in the new version of integrated dynamics. So assuming that new version is in this pack, which it should be, that should be fixed. So we'll just set up a nice little spot right here. Okay, for our rats to kind of chill and do their thing. So we're gonna have two chests next to each other. This is gonna be your input chest, right? Um, and then if I boop, he should drop down, cool. Now, um, we're going to want um, a rat's uh, item pickup and drop off thingy. So where's my rat's wand thingy? Uh, that's the radius staff, that's not what we want. The cheese staff, yes. So if I take you, take items from chest, deposit items in, shouldn't you be doing the thing? Or do I need to give you an upgrade that lets you do that? I might need to tell him to gather items. Where are you going, buddy? Wrong, no. No. Oh, you're picking up items from the world, aren't you? Yeah, that's not what I want. Harvest transport items? Is that what you're gonna do? He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. Is Wander gonna do it? What do I need to do to get you to take those items? Hmm. Okay, I don't know how, but suddenly it's working. I don't I don't think I changed anything. But look, if I get some assorted vegetables, I think it's working. Nobody panic, but I think it's actually working. Sweet! So this is your input chest, this is your output chest, right? So now we just need a crafter. Basic one should do. Right? And then we're gonna have an interface also. Now technically the he could be inserting into the interface, but I had so much trouble getting him working with the chest that I don't want to even try that. I don't even want to attempt that. I just want I just want it to I just want it to work. So what we're gonna do uh, is basically uh, we will have the crafter here with some cables. And what I wound up doing is putting him in transport item mode. And I gave him a whitelist for what he's allowed to pick up and transfer. And he'll deposit into this chest, right? So then we have an, the interface, right, can go here. And then we can have just any kind of item transport, whatever. Um, pipe or tube or whatever have you um, to transport the items. Um, basic, we'll just use, uh, we'll use the ultimate logistical transporter. Cool. And then we're going to need that doohickey from mechanism. Boop, boop. Cool. Okay. 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 We're good. We're good. So now let's just quickly go up here. And we'll teach you how to make assorted vegetables. Right, I can't click it. My 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 muscle memory is very much used to being able to just click this to see the recipe. It's gonna take me a long time to get used to not being able to do that. Okay, I'm just saying. It's gonna take me <clears throat> a really long time to be able to not do that. So assorted vegetables go here. Down here we will have this crafter here so if i said i wanted some of this give me 10 more we should see him get to work good job little rat you done did good and then we're gonna want to take that confit be all these stuff and we're gonna want to keep just say like 10 in the stock over there So this was a fun bit of automation, right? And then there should be an on-demand crafting need for it to happen. Sweet. Now you burned up all your nether stars. Let me give you a few more. 
and that should do its thing. Now we've got nether stars happening. Now if we wanted this to go a little bit faster, we could totally Gaia Guardian this guy, which I think I'm gonna do. Right, so we're just gonna upgrade this guy to a Gaia Mana Spreader, because why not? Put you on it, and then we'll bind you to there. And see how much faster it's eating now? See how much faster? Way faster. Noticeably faster. Well, the, the plant obviously takes longer to eat big things, but it transfers so much quicker so that it's definitely better. Wow, look how much mana we have. We are actually getting there on this mana pool thing. How great is that? All right. So now let's look at um, some of the crazy things we can get from Mythic Botany, right? Because that's... Oh, or you know what? We want to do the Gaia Guardian Mark II fight. So let's do that real quick. Uh, definitely sleep through the night for this bad boy, because yes. Very yes on sleeping through the night here. What I do? What's Dead and Seek do? Summon and Slay a Gari. Okay, cool. So we're going to do the Mark II Gaia Guardian, which is going to unlock some of the most ridiculously and overpowered items in Batania, uh, which are cool items. So we want to have this guy at the ready and go. <laughs> All right, this is the Mark II fight. This is much more difficult. So watch where you step. Important. If you thought, you know, stepping in the right spot was important before. Oh, and also the fairy is shooting you. Ah! I did not watch where I stepped. He teleports more frequently as well. Watch your footing, and you'll be fine. I feel like every time you hit him is when is when the is when the floor is changed. It also feels like staying out towards the edge of the area is like definitely a key here. Hey, look, Mark two fight. Nice. Now you can kill the fairies, by the way, if you so desire. Having a nice bow for this is definitely a key. And this is not a stupidly overpowered bow, as you can see by the virtue of the fact that it takes more than one hit to kill zombies. So I'm not, like, using an absurdly powerful bow here. It has fast draw speed, which is nice, but it's not, like, overpowered in any way. It's, I think it's almost as same as, uh, as a vanilla bow of similar chance. The only, like, modded overpoweredness of it is the draw speed. Oh, baby zombie! You're not allowed to summon those. I guess apparently you are, but I hate these zombies. They're the worst. Ow, 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 ow. I stepped in the bad spot. It's alright, I killed him. Battle over. At the mercy of a dream. That's right. That's right. Wow, this sword is just so big. It's hilarious. Uh, let's put away some junk, right? So we've got you, you. We got extra Gaia Spirits for that. Notice we get twice as many Gaia Spirits. We also get a will, which is an upgrade to the Terra Steel helmet. Um, so if you use Terra Steel armor, um, there's there's a bunch of wills that you can get from Batania um, that affect the Terra Steel hel helmet in some way, which is cool. Uh, drop some Mana Steel and Mana Pearls and Mana Diamonds, which is neat. Epic Shader Grab Bag. Dice of Fate. Good times. It drops a couple high-level runes. Look at that. That's neat. Several runes, actually. All those runes dropped from him? I'm not I'm not used to that happening, but that's really awesome. Um, we can put away our cable. We can put away... I'll hang on. Oh, I'm going to put away the will. That's fine. And then we'll do that to get that going. Now, the Dice of Fate is interesting. Um, so here's how it is. It is this. There are six epic items uh, called the Relics of a Seer. Um, so basically, the first chapter is like... That all sounds like nonsense. There's no way that there's such powerful items. But then you kill Gaia Guardian Mark II, and it's like, wait a minute, those items do exist. That's cool. Um, but basically, the dice of fate is what's going to determine what item you get. It's a six-sided die. You right-click it, and then you have a chance of getting one of the six items. Cool? So the relics cannot be awarded to the same person twice. They're bound to your player. Um, you have to keep it you know, safe. Definitely put some Resolute Ivy on there if you're worried about it. Um, so let's go ahead and roll the dice and see what item we get. Dun, 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 dun. We got the Ring of Thor. Not a bad one. Not a bad one. There's six items, like I said. And when you get it, it unlocks the chapter. You can see there's five locked 
um, things here. So those are the other five items I didn't get. One of three mythical rings of a seer, the ring of Thor bestows upon its wearer the might of the thunder god. When equipped, it dramatically increases the terror shatterer's area of effect. Now, we never did get the terror shatterer, and maybe we will just for fun this time, but this is like a neat item. It's basically a pickaxe, and you can infuse it with mana to increase its rank, and the higher the rank, the larger the area of effect is. But also, every time you increase the rank, it costs more mana to increase the rank further. So it goes, it starts at rank D, and then it goes up to C, B, A, S, and then double S, uh, where double S is the highest amount. It costs a ridiculous amount of mana to upgrade to double S. Um, I don't think I've ever done it, but maybe it would be fun just to, you know, especially with another star thing this time around. Maybe that might be a cool way to go. Um, yeah, so it's kind of neat. Well, we might want to check it out. So that is the Gaia Guardian Mark II. Again, not a terrible fight if you watch your footing. <laughs> you definitely need to watch your footing. St don't stand in the, in the purple spot, the purple bad. Cool, that's what we learned today. Purple bad, don't stand there. How's everybody doing? Wow, our mana pools are filling up. Look at this. During that fight, this pool over here almost completely filled. So we're very quickly about to hit a moment where we are going to have a copious amount of mana because full mana pool is neat. All right, let's check out Mythic Botany now because there's cool stuff in here I wanted to see. Um, one of them was the Mana Collector. I kind of wanted to check this out. Now, that requires a Rune of Vanaheim, Pixie Dust, and a Gaia Spirit Ingot, which obviously requires killing the first tier of the Gaia Guardian, and then some Glimmering Dreamwood, which is Dreamwood with Glowstone. I think I can make six of those, no problem. And then we just need um, the Rune of Vanaheim, which is Earth, Spring, and Pride. Earth... Spring. We do have the springs. Okay, cool. And Pride. Isn't that one that the Gaia Guardian just dropped for me? It might be. Sweet. Well, that's fortuitous. Elven Gateway Core and Netherite Ingot. Odd recipe. Elven Gateway Core and Netherite Ingot. We can accomplish such things. Dire Wolf. See how fast that's moving? Let's break it. I want only the fastest. See how much faster it's moving? And that's without even doing the the the, the mana lens. Which we should do, just because we can. It's just a fire rune that goes along with it. I'm always using my fire runes, because I always use potency. Velocity is neat. Velocity would also increase the speed, but I feel like potency is better when it's short range. Velocity might be better at a higher range. You can have two, so you could do both if you really were looking to like super optimize it, but it's all good. Hey, Rune of Anaheim, sweet. So the mana collector looks interesting and I really want to try it out because in order to do that though, we need uh, mana steel, mana pearl, mana diamond. And I'm going to just put away my Ring of Thor for now, because I don't feel like we need it. So you'll notice, by the way, that that drained about half a pool's worth of mana. All the other pools are full because dispersing, right? Um, so Mana Collector, do, do, do. this thing looks neat, and I'm just curious as to how it works. Um, cause I, I saw this and this was like one of the first things I wanted to check out. Um, so what we can do is hold control on this just to open up the, oops, wrong item. Mana collector. Uh, at some point in time your flowers will create mana that fast, that spreaders are not enough to handle it. The, this comes in. It allows the mana of flowers to be inserted into the spark network directly. You still need to attach a recessive spark to it though. Interesting, right? So what we want is a recessive spark. And then we'll kind of go from there. So we want a mana pearl. Let's just get a handful of those. And that should be cool. So we have to attach a recessive spark to this thing. But in theory, it sounds like we'll be able to remove all these Gaia spreaders now. 
Oh, well, that's not good. I mean, I understand what's happening, but yes. I should be careful about that. Okay. So I'm going to put you guys all away. Okay. And we should create something expensive like the Alfheim thingy. So... And uh, this is actually me being curious at this point. How much, indeed, will this cost? What else do I need? Dragonstone, right? That's going to be mana diamonds. Yes, I'm going to put the Earth Rune and the Spring and the Pride Rune away. We don't need those at the moment. I don't know that we need that many, so I'm just going to do half of them. But if we pay attention now, we'll notice that this guy's pretty close to full. So let's see how much this actually costs. And then we can test this new item. So look how much look how much mana that's draining. I'm gonna call that two mana pools worth of mana. I definitely think that that's about where we're at for elf stealing. It's two mana pools worth of mana, which is a lot. Which is a lot. Now, in theory, we should be able to remove the recessive rune from this. We shouldn't need him anymore. Okay. And what I want to do now is place this thing in here. So I'm assuming what we do is give the mana collector like a position. Do we bind you to the mana collector? Is that what we do? And then we give the mana collector either just the recessive augment or the actual spark itself. Spark and then recessive. Oh, hello. That's probably even faster than... That's neat. Okay, so that's probably faster. Let's see how much faster that is. Because I feel like... Oh, that's definitely faster than it was, right? I think we'd have to compare it to last episode, but that seems way faster. Do you have like a mana buffer? Yeah, you're not even you're not even touching the amount of mana production. Wow. That is fast. That is quite quick, actually. That's burning through our nether star like nobody's business. Look how fast that's going. Holy cow. Alright. And and it's and the coolest part of this is that it's working for all our flowers at once. We don't need three mana spreaders feeding into it. Now it's literally all our flowers do that. Man, that is neat. <clears throat> I like that a lot. You guys didn't auto bind to him and that's okay. I'm probably not even gonna bother with you guys existing anymore, but that's pretty nifty. I like that a lot. That is super cool. And our mana pool is just filling up like nobody's business. Yeah, look how fast that's going. Holy cow. That is, that is a serious speed of mana production. That is bananas. And with this being automated like this, like, forget about it. I like, I like Mythic Botany. I don't like you changing the Gaia Guardian recipe. I'm sorry, I just don't. But, I do like this. <laughs> I do like this. That is cool. And full. So I'm interested in this Alf Blade, because... My current sword does like 10 attack damage and like a little bonus, but this dude does 13. I just want to try it out. Is there anything special about these these items? This sword does much more damage and you can swing it much faster. Oh, that's cool. The elf truncator. Despite being able to chop down whole trees in just seconds, this axe can pull nearby items toward you when doing a shift right click. That's neat too. Uh, this peck axe is able to mine even more blocks at once. It mines multiple blocks in the direction you're looking as well. This only works horizontally to prevent fall damage when mining down. Fair enough. Uh, the helmet can get all ancient wills like the terra steel, but it also makes you reach further with your arms. Huh. Knockback resistance is high. Leggings drastically improve your walking speed, and the shoes make you jump much higher into the sky. I kind of want to try them all out. Uh, it's going to require a lot of a lot of stuff, though. Uh, it's a smithing table. You need to make a terra blade and then add the elf stealing it to it. Um, for some items, it's that. For others, I think you needed the double elf steel. So for armor, you need double elf steel. For um, not armor, you need normal elf steel. Okay, cool. 
And then there's the a, a better band of mana, which is uh which is a ring based item that's like uh you know stuff. Neat. Okay. What else we got in here? Um, I don't understand the purpose of the this wand of the forest. I guess it's just a cosmetic thing, which is neat. Um, Muspelheim, what's this guy do? Makes you immune to all kinds of fire damage and makes you ignite someone when you attack him. Oh, that's neat. Uh, Niflheim, slowness effect for a short time and you're immune to cramming and in wall damage. That also looks neat. Ooh, what's this guy do? Uh, what is this? You drop a horn of the wild into it. To perform rune rituals? What's a rune ritual? What's a rune ritual? That's interesting. Look at this neat ring. Ring of Andwari. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure out what rune rituals do. Rune tablet of the here. Knowledge of Mimir. Uh, this is a whole thing. So it looks like there's a whole thing going on here that I need to figure out. Um, let's see. What other rune rituals are there? Runes of the Nine Worlds. The Mana Infuser we've already got. The Well of Mimir. You've already come in contact with the sacred tree Yggdrasil. The central block of the portal of Elfheim was a piece linked to it. By rearranging the recipe a bit, you think you have found a way to get a branch of Yggdrasil that is capable to provide water drain from the roots of the Yggdrasil if given a bit of mana. Huh. Interesting. You can do rune magic after drinking from said well. You think you can achieve this as well. So basically, we have to drop a Horn of the Wild onto a mana pool to get the Gajalar Horn. Uh, you'll need this. You'll need a Gajalar Horn for this. This can be filled with the branch of Yidrasil by placing an empty Gajalar Horn in and giving it some mana. Drinking from the full horn will provide you the knowledge to perform rune rituals. Okay. All right. So flipping through the book, there's a whole new chapter on Alfheim. And it looks like we can actually travel to Elfheim with Myth at Botany. So those of you who've played Botany in the past know that that portal, there's no way to actually travel to Alfheim. But with the Mead of Kvasir, uh, who was a dwarf formed by the gods after the Aesir made peace with the Baneer, uh, he wandered through the Nine Worlds and was highly regarded everywhere. Um, he did some stuff and killed some people and mixed their blood with honey, apparently. Um, and drinking this mead gave them the ability to travel between worlds. And we can do that too if we get a bottle of honey and some blood of Kvasir. So after drinking the mead, you'll be able to step into the portal to Alfheim and travel to Alfheim yourself. If you accidentally break your portal in Alfheim, you can fix it. Um, but we have to do the rune ritual, okay, um, in order to get the blood of Kvasir. And we need a soul scribe, owl steel, mana glass, and a wandering trader to be near it. And it just so happens that I'm hearing some meh outside right now, uh, which is actually exceedingly lucky of me. So let's make sure he's not invisible, because that would be annoying. Where are you, Mr. Hmm? Where's Mr. Hmm? He's wandering traders, and their ability to go invisible is super annoying. Is he inside my house? Where are you even? Are you in this? No. Where, pray tell, might he be? I feel like... I can't even tell where he is. Is there a potion that lets me see invisible entities? Asking for a friend. I have no idea where he's chilling at. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Ah, he's not a wandering trader, he's a plague doctor. So we're going to need to wait for a wandering trader to come by, uh, which should eventually happen. But in the meantime, there's a lot we need to do. So in order to progress through this mod, we need to get the ability to do um, 
this. So let's see, shift click this guy. The rune tablet of Fimbiotir will be dropped when the guardian of the Gaia 2 is slain by a player who has acquired the knowledge of Mimir. It is used as a as central rune in the most powerful rune rituals. It also says on the bottom here, uh, this rune will be consumed. So it looks like we have to do the Gaia Guardian fight too after, uh, so in order to do this, uh, we have to do the Knowledge of Mimir quest, which is where we get the Branch of Yggdrasil, okay? So we have to get one of those, and we have to fill it with water, with the Horn of the Wild. All right, so let's do this. Horn of the Wild, okay. Uh, you are seeds, I think? Grass, grass. All right. Stop dropping items. Yeah, me picking up that item is definitely going to be a problem. In Very yes. Very yes. We're going to have to figure out a solution to that. I'll figure it out. Oh, you turned into a fern? Oh, I know why, because I dropped it into the wrong thing. Ha ha, dire wolf. Ha ha, he says. Okay. And that does this and this. So here's your horn of the wild, right? And then we want the branch of Yggdrasil, which is going to use some Terra Steel Nuggets, which I just happen to have. Okay. So do I just click it on there in the horn? So I need to drop this first into a pool. Oops. And then click it on there. I might want to feed it some mana. And I'm going to do that with a spreader, because I don't know if sparks will work. And I don't know how much it needs either. But I guess I just click you on there. Okay. And then, and you know, I want to move him to where, I want the gap. I like the gap. You don't technically need a space. I like the space. Sorry. Just who I am. Um, oh, my guy has spiders are in my inventory still. Cool. We'll take a mana lens of potency though. So how much mana do you need, buddy? I have no idea. No indication for how much mana he's going to need. But I guess we'll find out, right? We're keeping up, though. I think we're I think we're using mana slower than we're producing it at this point, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Uh, so I have no idea how long this is going to take to fill up. Oh, never mind. I was about to say we'll come back when it's done. I think it's done. So then I drink it. Hooray! I drank the water of wisdom. Sweet. Uh, as you drink the water from the well of Mimir, you gain knowledge about things you could never imagine in your wildest dreams. Well then. Well then. He said. Well then. He said as a mild pun. A mild pun. Get it? I drank from the well, and then I said, well then? Yeah. <laughs> so then we're going to want to fight Gaia Guardian Mark II, which means upgrading you to one of these bad boys. And that's cool. So what do you guys think about wrapping up the episode here? We'll come back next time, and we'll check this out. So apparently we can visit Alfheim. It's a whole dimension to explore. Um, and... There's some cool stuff to get over there. And then we'll also check out things like the Alf Blade. But it looks like there's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a serious process. It's a serious process, okay, um, to get this, this brew, right, um, the meat of Kvasir, right? So the, that's going to be a lot of runes. This rune will not be consumed. Well, that's cool. And it looks like it, it actually matters what position they're in and a few other things. So hopefully a Wandering Trader will come by. Um, I'll capture him in the thing. We'll do the Rune Holders. And for now, it's wrapping up point. So Devil20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.